and welcome inside. As you guys can tell by the title, we are talking about the Big Ten West today, and I am Dylan Staggy here today with Jason Gandhi and Dan Majors. So we're going to go through every team. Uh, Dan's going to give us a little preview uh, what they lost from last year. We're going to talk about a few questions for each team and then give a prediction for their record and standings in the Big Ten West. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Dan for Wisconsin. Yep, so we're going to go in order of the division standings from last year, and so we will start with the Wisconsin Badgers. As last year they went 13-1, and 9-0 and in the conference, and won the West division. They missed out on the playoff by losing to Iowa State in the Big Ten title. Then they beat Miami in the Orange Bowl. They returned 13 total starters, 9 on offense and 4 on defense. Key losses include Troy Fumagalli, Leon Jacobs, Alec James, and Garrett Dooley. So, Wisconsin, they have a very good running game this year in Jonathan Taylor and that offensive line. Are they, or do they have the best running game in the country? So, I personally do not think so. I would take two other teams before I took Wisconsin's. Uh, I would take J.K. Dobbins and Mike Weber from Ohio State because they've got two, and I think that those two can balance each other out to form one heck of a running duo. But also, you got to look at Stanford. I mean, the best running back in the country last year was Bryce Love. Jonathan Taylor was the best in the Big Ten. And Stanford has, has seven linemen with starting experience coming back, 93 combined starts, and had four all Pac-12 honors on their offensive line. So I, I would take Stanford and Ohio State, but then definitely Wisconsin would be third. All right, so I, I'm going to say that the Badgers do have the best running game in the country. I think they have a top two running back and Jonathan Taylor and a top two offensive line. So that combined, I don't see how you could say that they don't. Right, they have maybe the best running back in the country and Jonathan Taylor, I wouldn't say is the best, but he's definitely one of the best along with, in my opinion, by far the best offensive line in the country. All of the starters return on the line that had four guys with Big Ten honors. They also, they also get Taiwan Deal and Sam Brodner back, who both didn't play because of injury last year. And this line is going to go up against some of the best defensive lines and match up well as they play Michigan, Penn State, Northwestern. I don't see why they wouldn't be the best running game in the country, especially with this offensive line. They are by far the best offensive line in the country, along with a top three running back in the country. Yeah, but see, what scares me for Wisconsin is really just, like you mentioned, who they have to play. They have those Michigan, Ohio right. State, and Penn State, all those deep But, I mean, if you, if you have... But if you, you look at Stanford. Stanford is a top five offensive line and the best running back in the country where they don't have to face him when it's that good. Like, USC is No, yeah, be but, fine. I, if, but I, like, if I put them up against the same exact schedule, who do you Agree. Have? I'm taking Wisconsin. But okay, I, thought, I think we meant, like, predicting for this season. Okay. Like, then. who's going to be the best running game in the country? That's why. That's the query. Okay, that's the way then, I yeah, took the I would question. Say... I'm taking Stanford. They have a light schedule with right. top four offensive line and the best running back. Is why I personally thought Stanford. I'd... And I think Ohio State gives Wisconsin run for their money this year also. Because they've got two. If you combine everything, personally. That's the, re- that's the way I took it was... Who, who will have the best running game in the country, personally. Like, that's how, yeah, that's why I'm giving it to Stanford. Okay, I, if I had to rank them and, like, not put them up against their schedule right now, I would put Wisconsin number one, no doubt. If yeah, like I was if going I needed, by schedule yeah, two. Yeah, like if you If I needed someone to, like, play in like an NFL pro, team, like I'd, take, I'd take Wisconsin. But, I mean, like, who's going to have the best running game in the country? I think you go Stanford, Ohio State, uh, I'd go... Wisconsin. Stanford and Wisconsin, very, very close, and then then Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, I think Alabama would have to be up there, too. Yeah. Damian oh, Harris, no so And Jordan. Good. And Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma also has a good running game this year yep. with Kyler Murray and all of them. So, yep. yeah. Also, shout out Florida State. Cam Akers, he was my Heisman pick last year. Go yeah. do it this year. Almost. Almost. Go do it next year, guys. Don't Wait, worry. did you pick him to win the Heisman? I said him or DeAndre Francois, whoever the better year. <laughs> all right. Well, well, keep uh, almost there. <laughs> so, let's move on to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, they only return four guys or four starters on defense. Does that concern you? Yeah, it does because they have a tougher schedule as well mm-hmm. to losing four starters. I see the linebackers being the anchor of the group. Six of the top eight return. They are the most experienced of the defense, but this will be a top 20 defense still. They just might not be top 10 like usual. Yeah, I think you definitely have to look at the secondary. Uh, they lost so much last year, and I mean, they're just bringing in a whole new secondary 
Um, but I think the front seven, especially the linebackers, like Jason mentioned, uh, will be fine. So I think it's a little bit of a concern. Um, but, I, I mean, that secondary is probably the biggest thing to look out for. Uh, yeah, they lose five guys with Big Ten honors, which concerns me a lot. But they revamp really well and still have a lot of experience. Uh, look for guys like Garrett Rand, who was recruited heavily, Zach Bond, Christian Bell, and Dante Carrier-Williams to mm-hmm. emerge and be a big part of this team. Also, TJ Edwards and Dakota Dixon were great last year and will be elite this year. Dakota Dixon was all Big Ten first team, if I remember correctly. I don't have a – Yeah, I, I think me, so, but, but I, I, yeah, I he was a baller last yeah, year. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, so, yeah, even though they lose a lot, this is still one of the best defenses in the country. Um, so, Wisconsin last year was a game away, or a Big Ten championship away – from making the playoff and having a chance for the national championship. Is Wisconsin a national championship contender this year? Yes, because their schedule is still easier than most teams. They have a QB with experience, debatably the best running back in the nation, and the best offensive line. This offense should be humming all season. Defensively is where I can see the season hinging on. If they can stop a guy like Trace McSorley when it's at Penn State, or a guy like Shea Patterson when it's at Michigan, then they could very well be 12-0. and But... Yeah. I, so I definitely think they are. I don't think they will be a contender, but I think they definitely have to be in the preseason conversation because you look at the schedule and you look at all the experience they have offensively. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have a good shot at the playoff this year, and I think any any team that makes the playoff is obviously going to be in the running for a national title. It's only two games you have to win once you get in there. So, Well, yes and no. I wouldn't say Washington two years ago was had a chance to win the championship, but... Yeah, I mean, I Alabama was insane that year, though. Yeah, true. Um, I also don't think that any, I think I'm with Dill. I mean, any team that makes the playoff has a chance. Like you never. Yeah, know. and I mean, I mean Wisconsin yes has a very no. good chance at the playoff. Like, nobody thought, nobody, thought, nobody thought Ohio State had a chance against Alabama. That's that's fact. Like yeah, it's just that. like you yeah. never know. It's a football game. Yeah. No one knows. If you yeah. make it in the playoff, you have a shot. Huh? Michigan State had a shot, guys. Thirty-eight to oh, three. Shoot, I didn't think of that. Yeah. That's why I thought you were going to go. Yeah, again, Alabama was insane that year too. So. I mean, every team's got a shot, but, like, obviously there's favorites. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't say every team. In the playoffs. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, well, I would say, yes, they definitely are a championship contender. They have the units that can match up with anyone in the country. I think there's no doubt they can make the playoff, but they're also one of my few teams that I think can win the national championship. Really? Yes. Because of the running game? And well, like, what they, they play how, how many teams are on playoff. that list? That, exactly. I don't know. I'd put like six or seven on that list. Who are they? Do you have them? Roughly. You don't have to get them like all Clemson, up. Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan Oklahoma. State. Oklahoma? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it comes down to three teams personally. So that, that's my six probably. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just – I worry about what happens when you play a team like Alabama. They do the exact same thing, but they're better at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, but they also have a very easy schedule. They won't be but that used to playing sp- top teams like that. Yeah, I, Alabama is not used stop, to playing top teams. I understand teams. that, but like every I, Alabama team, Wisconsin play. matches up well. I do still. I I agree because they have a great offensive line and counteract the defensive line right. and that. But like they do the exact same thing. That'd be the most boring game to watch of all time. That'd be the most like six yard runs. Well, I mean, like run. every Big Ten game. I'm assuming Wisconsin, Alabama. Yeah, I mean, every Big Ten game's like that. That's kind of true. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. What do you think their record and standings prediction is for this year? I am at 10-2. and two. They lose to Iowa and Penn State. They finish Iowa. first. Yeah. I is mean, it at Iowa? Uh, yeah. It is. It Iowa. is, and it's before the bye week. They It's their first conference game. I think they just come out a little flat. Iowa jumps on it. Iowa has proven it's a tough t- place to play. Like, they upset Michigan, I think it was two years ago. They upset Ohio State last year. Like, I think Iowa is going to be uh, somewhat of a contender in this Big Ten West. They have no one in the non-conference. They're at Michigan, at Penn State, but that's really it. They avoided Michigan State and Ohio State, so I think they go 10-2. and two. I mean, they do have some of their tougher games um, on their schedule on the road, but I don't really see Iowa – or Northwestern as being too huge of an obstacle for Wisconsin. The games that I'm worried about more are Michigan and Penn State, and I think they'll probably drop one of those and go to 11 and one, but still finishing first. See, but I feel like in college football, it's hard, like it's hard to just look at like who has the most skill, always winning. 
teams get sh- like upset all the time, and that's oh, why no, like definitely. and that's no, why yeah. like when we had talk about Michigan State, I had Arizona State beating them, and I have Iowa beating Wisconsin. Like obviously, who's the best team? Wisconsin. They're going to beat them if it's the best talent. But like you see these upsets all the time, oh, and yeah. that's why I think Iowa is a team. that's like oh, they right. could upset them, and oh, that's yeah. yeah. Like I don't think Iowa's a better team than Wisconsin. It's just a matter. Anytime of, like, you put Iowa up against anybody at home, yeah, I, I'll give them a shot. Yeah. Um, so I own 11-1, 8-1 in the conference, finishing first in the West. I have them losing to Penn State. I still haven't decided if they win the Big Ten title, but if they do, then they will most likely make the playoff. It, in your guys' in your guys' eyes, do they make the playoff with one loss? Because last year they no doubt would not have made the playoff with one loss. Actually, they didn't make the playoff with one loss. Yeah, so no, I don't think they, I mean, I don't think they're a playoff contender unless they go undefeated or they win the Big really? Ten or they or they win the Big Ten championship. Oh, okay. So yeah. if they go twelve and one, win the Big Ten championship, then they're in. Okay, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I would also put them in because. I don't think they will. I mean, they they still have a couple. Of, I mean, their schedule I think is still a little bit tougher than last year with two road games at Michigan and at Penn State and New Mexico. Oh, yeah. No, last year they went twelve and zero, and still a lot of people were like, I don't think they should be. Yeah, in, I mean, so. they just didn't play anybody. Well, they, I don't even think they were in the top four at that point, were they? I don't oh, know. Okay, I, no, they were yeah. three. They were three. My bad. But yeah, obviously they didn't get in with one loss and. People were thinking about putting Ohio State in there with two losses. So um, they're just got a team that's hard to like get around because they're not fun to watch. They're not flashy, so it's hard for like the public to be like, "Oh, Wisconsin's good." Yeah. Same with Miami. Like no one really wanted to give like, them. No one wants to watch Alex because, Horny book. exactly like, or whatever the Wisconsin Miami's quarterback is. I forget his name. Louis Rozier. Yeah, that dude. Yeah. Like no one's like, "Oh yeah, I can't well, yeah. Wait. Miami was it, fun to watch." That's just year. defense, though. It wasn't like and um, they had some really close games at the end. I'm just saying, like, no one, like, gets up on Saturday morning and goes, oh, I can't wait for the Miami game tonight, or I can't wait for the Wisconsin game. Yeah. Like, it's just kind of like... Miami, Miami st- yeah. Miami. Plus, Miami plays in prime time. I mean, you look at Wisconsin, like, are you really going to watch Wisconsin-Illinois 12 o'clock game? No one's, watching, no one's watching, watching Illinois play football. I know. No one's watching <laughs> Illinois play football. They don't even have people come in their stands. Don't they play Rutgers this year? I hope so. They do. Yeah, I'm that's another bad Rutgers game. <laughs> Rutgers, Kansas, Rutgers, Illinois. Illinois oh, man, gonna be got some them 42,000 fans in the seats, and there are 80,000 seats that fill up at Wisconsin, and 42,000, so just over half the stadium shut up for Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so are we good with Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on to Northwestern this last year. They got to 10 wins, finished 10-3, and 7-2 and in the conference, and finished second in the West, and they won the Music City Bowl over Kentucky. They returned 14 total starters, 7 on offense, 7 on defense. Their key losses include Justin Jackson, Godwin, Equal Week, and Kyle Kiero. So, Northwestern, they had a great finish last year. Uh, what is the reason why Northwestern finished so well last year, and how can they bring that into this year? So last year, I mean, I was really high on Clayton Thorson and Justin Jackson going in. It took a while to get going. They lost to Duke, lost to Wisconsin, lost to Penn State. They sat at two and three. Yeah. Then they went off and run seven straight to win the season, to finish the season. No, eight. Eight straight. Sorry, I wasn't clouding the bowl game. I was saying, no. like, before the bowl game. They no. went seven straight. The difference for me was the offense. They had one game under 20 points, only two games under 30 after that stretch. They just were humming towards the end. This year, they lose Justin Jackson. I think that will be a big loss, but Thorson's more experienced. And Dan mentioned, I think, seven starters returning on the offense, so this group should be very good again. Yeah, they're experienced, definitely. Yeah. See, um, I mean, you look at last year, Northwestern's finish. First off, their schedule uh, just slided up. I mean, Duke was a bad loss, obviously, in Week 2, but then you look at the other two games that they lost, uh, Wisconsin and Penn State. (laughs) I I mean, those aren't bad losses at all. They also won three overtime games uh, in the middle of their season, which is going to be hard to do and if they did it over again they probably would not repeat that I mean also the defense stepped up to Jason you mentioned the offense but I mean they only gave up over 30 points one time that was to Michigan State after three overtimes so and they still won that game so yeah uh, I was a huge fan of Clayton Thorson last year as he was a huge part of their eight game winning streak which is actually the longest um, in the country coming into this year Uh, and I'm a big fan of or I am huge on teams finishing the season and bringing it into this year. So I think their streak will translate into this year, and Thorson should be fine coming off the ACL injury. Did you guys see their new facility they got? 
It is crazy. Oh, yeah. Nice. Did you right see next it, to Lake Michigan. Let me get it up on my computer. Obviously, these people can't see it. It's like literally you look outside the window and like the lake is right there. Like it is crazy. Really? And, yeah. and like one oh. half of the building is a wall. So like, or it's like a window. Like the wall is the window. Yeah. So like you're literally seeing the ocean while you practice. Yeah, their campus is beautiful. It's so nice. Let me get a good picture so you can see. Oh, here we go. This is. Oh, Jeez. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, we can talk about this after we get off the podcast. But yeah, <laughs> it's unreal. It's just so nice. It's new this year. And definitely go to Northwestern because you can go play in the football facility, future recruits. Like, who cares if they're good? Pat Fitzgerald's one heck of a coach. Definitely go do that. Yep. So, uh, let's talk about the record and standings prediction for this year. What do you got? So, this schedule is brutal. Like, I oh, see yeah. them at 7-5 and five with a ceiling of 8-4. and four. Be- ceiling of eight and four. Yeah, like they just have such hard games. I just can't see them winning. Like I think they definitely lose to Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, and I was a tough game. I see them being able to beat Notre Dame or Iowa to put them at eight, but that's best case scenario. I don't see them beating both. So I have them at seven and five, third in the Big Ten still, but just I, th- I think their schedule is very brutal. I like them at eight and four because I'm just not that high on Iowa. I think they win that game. Whoever wins that game will finish in second. I think it's a little bit of a toss up, but right now I'll go with Northwestern. I like them a little bit more. Yeah, I got Northwestern finishing eight and four, uh, six and three in the conference, finishing second in the West. Their schedule is too tough to get back to ten wins, but I can definitely see them getting to nine. Um, because I, I mean, I'd be scared of the Cats if I were yeah. Michigan, Michigan State, Notre Dame, and Wisconsin. Uh, I see them beating Iowa. I don't see why they – well, I mean, I do see why they can't beat those four teams that I just mentioned, but I can see them winning another one of those games along with Iowa. Yeah, I you mean, just look at their schedule from September 29th to November 10th. They go Michigan, Michigan State, Nebraska, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Iowa. Like, they have a brutal – Oh, yeah. Four of those so, are at home, though. You have to look at that also. So yeah, they are an upset candidate. It's still Michigan – Notre Dame, Wisconsin, like those teams are still like historic programs. They're always going to have good seasons. They know how to travel. Like it's not like it's the Iowa game or the Nebraska game where it's like, oh, they beat games. Michigan State last year. They did beat Michigan State last year in triple overtime. But I don't know. I think like I, I think the Wildcats will be one of the best seven and five teams in the country. Like, I, don't, I think they'll look okay, better okay. than a seven and five team. But it's just because of their schedule, I just can't see where they get better than eight and four. But I do want to make this point. I think the Purdue Northwestern game is going to be a big game for both team seasons. I think depending, I think that game will be closer than most people expect, and I think whoever wins that game will really have a big impact on how their season goes. I think Purdue could have a better season than people expect if they can upset Northwestern. It is home for Purdue, but I think if Northwestern wins, that could be the start of them getting hot and making some noise. So I think that game, it's a Thursday night game. It's kind of like that Ohio State IU game from last year where it was the first conference game on that first week, Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a big game. It's going to tell a lot of signs in that Big Ten come November. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to Iowa. As last year, they went 8-5, 4-5 in the conference, and tied for third in the West, and beat – I I did not write down who they beat in the Penn Who did they beat in the Penn Circle? Iowa? Boston College. Boston College, sorry. You're good. Um, They returned 13 total starters, 7 on offense and 6 on defense. Their key losses include Aker Wadley, Josie Jewell, and Josh Jackson. Uh, So my question to you guys about Iowa, can Iowa compete for the Big Ten West this year? Yeah, their schedule definitely lets them, that's for sure. They're home for Wisconsin at Penn State, but that's it. They really – those are the only two games – that are really like brutally tough in my mind. They have a few games that could be trap games, but they're at Penn State, at Minnesota, at IU, at Purdue, and at Illinois. Three out of those five were at the bottom of their conference last year. Like, I would not be shocked at all to see the Hawkeyes and the Badgers battling out to the last week for the West. I don't think there's any way. I'm not as high on Iowa. I think, obviously, like you mentioned, their schedule is not that great, um, and they do have some of their tougher games at home. But I, I think their defense is just a big concern, replacing all of that talent that they're losing this year. I don't know. For me, like they're still gonna be strong. They just aren't. They just don't have the star names that are gonna make them strong. They don't have the Josie Jewell and the Josh Jackson. But like, they're still deep and they're still good. They've still got guys that can definitely produce. In my mind, I honestly am more worried about them like bouncing back. Like with Kirk Ferentz, or obviously his last name being the coach. Like I don't trust him as a coach. So I'm worried about if they do drop home versus Wisconsin, can they rebound for the second half of their season coming off that bye? That's more where I'm worried about than their individual talent. I love Nathan Stanley. I think he's going to have a heck of a season. 
I wish that Crumb Wiley would have been back for this year. They would have been so good this year if they had Wadley back for this last year. But it is what it is. I think when they get Kinnick Stadium as their home turf, I think they are definitely going to ball next year just because their schedule is so easy. Yeah, I uh, I do think they can compete for the Big Ten West this year. Um, but but only based on the schedule. Yeah. Um, it's extremely hard to win in Kinnick Stadium. Uh, just ask Penn State and Ohio State last year. Penn exactly. State, Penn State is their only tough game on the road as they get Wisconsin, Northwestern, and Iowa City, like you guys mentioned. Um, but they, I, I'm going to say yes. Can they compete for the Big Ten West this year? But I don't think they will. So let's move on. Like to, they can, but they won't. Right. Okay. Um, so let's move on to the record and standings prediction for Iowa. What do you got, Jason? <laughs> So, yeah, like I said, I think their schedule lets them have – I think they have to split with Wisconsin and Penn State. I think they do that. Like I said, I think they beat Wisconsin. I still think they go 10-2, and two, but I think they finish second. I think they lose to Minnesota and Penn State. I really do think the Hawkeyes don't have as much talent as most teams that go 10. Like, they might be the worst of the 10-2 and two teams. Like I said, Northwestern is the best of the 7-5 and five teams. I think I was going to be the worst 10-2 and two team, but because the way their schedule plays out, I don't see where they should be under 9-3. and three. Okay, hold up. You have Iowa ten and two. Yep. Wisconsin ten and two. Yep. Iowa beating Wisconsin. No, Wisconsin beating Iowa. You just no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Iowa beating Wisconsin. So you have Iowa, Iowa winning the Big Ten West. Yeah. I guess that's yeah. I guess that's how it works. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alrighty then. I, I, <laughs> Dang. I think they're nine and three and finish in third. Uh, they have a better record overall than Northwestern, but. Um, I think the Wildcats lose out of conference in Notre Dame and then beat Iowa, making them finish in second and Iowa in third. I think for Iowa, it's more of trying to finish in second more than it is in first. I don't think they'll yeah, so what be do you in have, the same you caliber. Eight, eight and four? Nine and three. Nine and three for Iowa? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I have eight and four for Iowa, third in the West. Uh, I think they go five and four in the conference. They lose to Wisconsin, Minnesota, Penn State, and Northwestern. The two main things I like about this team are Nathan Stanley and the defensive line, but I don't think that will be enough to pull off any upsets this year. And last year they didn't show up in some of their easier games like Purdue. So I don't I don't see them getting to ten wins like Jason said. I can maybe see nine, but I, I can I can definitely see nine. But I have them at eight and four, and I don't see a way they. I think they can compete for the Big Ten West, but like I, I don't think it's very realistic. Any other comments about Iowa? No. Um, let's move on. I didn't realize I had Purdue. number one. <laughs> I do. I forgot I'm beating this guy. Yeah, that's sweet. Go Hawkeyes. <laughs> I saw their stadium in person. I'm buying them. I'm all aboard the Hawkeyes train. Their I schedule mean, is just so easy. I mean, I realize that, but... And upsets happen all the time. They can upset Wisconsin. Upsets but, happen all the time to Iowa. I'm not, oh, yeah. I mean, they could, exactly. they could be very easy to lose to at Illinois and be like, well, that, that was fun while it lasted. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not like confident. It's just like the way their schedule looks. Yeah, I think, they, I think same, they can get an upset. And this was the same thing for me with Minnesota last year. They had a exactly. cake schedule. Yeah, and you thought they I could, had them going like nine and three or ten and two yeah. and winning the Big Ten West. So but yeah, I don't know. That's the scary part of this because I don't trust Kirk Ferentz. Like you at least trusted PJ Fleck. I don't. I don't trust Coach Ferentz in Iowa. I just yeah. more I'm like banking on their schedule and Nathan Stanley. And if it works out, cool. If not, they could be like three and nine and we'll yeah, all look like I an idiot next year. Think, yeah. All right. Anyway, let's move on to Purdue. As last year they went seven and six. Um, totally exceeded expectations, went 4-5 and five in the conference, tied for third in the West, and beat Arizona in the Foster Farms Bowl. They returned 13 total starters, 9 on offense and 4 on defense. Their key losses include Jawan Bentley, TJ McCollum, and Josh Oconye. So can Purdue continue trending upward this year as after a surprise season from last year? Yeah, great question, Dan. The defense is really going to struggle. Uh, nine of the top 12 tacklers are gone, and they only have four starters back, like Dan said. Marcus Bailey's going to have to be a star for this defense. I do like the offense the Boilermakers have this year. I'm higher on it than most. I think with Sindelar at the helm and at least somewhat more experienced wide receivers, I think the wide receivers can have a huge boost. Record-wise, I don't know if they will be trending upwards because of the schedule, right. but I think Jeff Brom definitely has this team going in the right direction. Yeah. And if I'm a Boilermaker fan, I'm all in on the Brom train. Yeah, I mean, their offense would just have to get so much better this year to really carry those losses on defense. Um, just not a lot of experience back on there. And 
I, I mean, I'm still not huge on either Blau or Sindelier, so. Yeah, I uh, I think their defense will no doubt get worse after only returning four starters and losing Robinson and Bentley. Brom totally exceeded the expectations last year, and I think he can exceed them again this year because the expectations will be low. That was my question for you. What do you see the expectations being? Like a bowl? You think the no. expectations Expect- are low? Oh, yeah. With the schedule? I don't think. I know. I mean, my dad went to Purdue, and he talked about them all the time. I think like, he said he's optimistically hoping they're seven and five. Oh yeah, I gosh. think I think Purdue fans. I think Purdue fans <laughs> think they're going to be like bulls. Yeah, for a while. I think not because like I think have they looked all... at the schedule? No, I think you just have to believe in what Brom did. I mean, you, you I understand. Said, that, remember but... last year, I was high on Purdue getting four wins. You guys thought I was crazy. I think it was four or five, and you guys were like, no, they'll have like three, and I was like, no, they can get five. Like, and he out did that. that, and so like. I think when you, if I'm a Purdue fan, I'm looking at this team and I'm like, Brom did it last year. Why not this year? Yeah, like from our oh, perspectives, no, yeah. like from our perspectives, we're like, yeah, shut up. Like they might get to a bowl game, that'd be great. But like, I think Purdue fans, like Dylan was saying, I don't think the expectations are as low as you think because I do think after anytime your team does good for one year, you want to see that for a few more years. You want to see that consistency. I think they're expecting it. Yeah, guess, especially when you got a coach like Brom who overachieved in his first right, year. I exactly. mean. They're expecting that just to be the floor. That's that, yeah, that should be the, the expectation. The ex- I, I guess I'm saying the expectations around college football is they're going to not make a bowl. But I if think, you talk about Purdue, okay, I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah, I think Purdue should I think Purdue should be happy if they make a bowl. I think oh, that yeah. should be the expectation. If they make a bowl, great. If not, we figure it out. Like, I think that should really be kind of like the bar of where – And I think bowling is their ceiling. So Really? Yeah. The only thing you do about it, 6-6? Six and six? Yeah, dude, look at the schedule. I mean, I have them five and seven. Yeah, I have them five and seven. I have them losing to Northwestern, Boston College, Nebraska, Ohio State, Michigan State, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Do you have them beating Missouri? Yeah, I have beating Missouri. I don't think I don't think Missouri is that great. I think it's just Drew Locke. Obviously, I didn't look into him as much as you guys did. Yeah, but I think Drew Locke can just absolutely. I don't buy Drew Locke that much. I'll be honest. Yeah, but look at this defense for Purdue. I would be a shootout. Ball. No, definitely be a shootout. I mean, you think last Purdue's going to win in a shootout? I, I mean, you look at last year, Over Lamar, Missouri? Lamar Jackson played against them, and they kept it a seven-point game the entire game. Oh, yeah. That was and, a great game. I mean, they killed Missouri last year. Drew Locke was still there, and they beat him 35-3. to three. Like, they did yeah, not... Yeah, they also had a better defense. Okay, 20... The defense was not 32 points good. I mean, yeah, but what's happened? I'm just saying. Yeah, it wasn't... But, like, I'm saying they played them last year, and they beat him by 32 points. Like... I don't think Missouri's like, a, oh, they definitely got this. Boston College, I think, is a team on the rise. We haven't got to the ACC yet. I yeah, think Boston, Boston College, College is going to be real good. I think yeah. they're a team. A.J. Dillon can I'm not sure I'm as high as everyone else, but. Really? I think A.J. Dillon's, I think AJ Dillon's a Heisman contender for sure, in my opinion. I think he's going to be a heck, have one heck of a season. But also, he could be the Andre Williams like he did. They have 2,000 yards, but their team not be great. So he goes yeah. to New York yeah. and then doesn't win. I mean, that could be. They have a lot of guys returning, too. Yeah. So a I mean, lot of experience. Yeah. I think Boston College is a loss. Yeah. And I mean, if they beat Boston. I think, th- okay, I guess I'll say, I guess they split Missouri-Boston College. They win one, they lose one. Which order, I guess, I think it'll okay. be they beat Missouri, lose, but lose Boston College. But it is what it is. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll flip with you. On those two, but I see a five and seven season for the Boilermakers. All right, I got four and eight, um, really? three and six in the conference, finishing fourth in the I West. Really hope Who do they so. beat? Who do they beat? Who do they beat? Yeah. Well, I have the losses written down. I don't have the schedule okay, written no for worries, me. Uh, I have Northwestern, yeah. Missouri, Boston College, Ohio State, Michigan State, Iowa, and Wisconsin. So you think they went and at, IU? So you think they went at IU, at Nebraska, Eastern Michigan? And I missed one. I think Nebraska is definitely going to be tough. I'm just going to mention the ones. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like what you're seeing schedule wise. I think they have Illinois, obviously. Yeah, and Illinois. That's it. Yeah. Cool. That's it. Yep. Yeah. So non-conference is definitely going to be tough because Locke will just throw all over and oh, throw all over them. And uh, like Jason mentioned, Boston College is on the rise. Then their East games are extremely tough with Ohio mm-hmm. State and Michigan State. They get Ohio State at home. Obviously, not going to win, but like they have them at home, so that makes yeah. it a little bearable. That makes it more bearable. They also get Wisconsin at home. That makes that bearable. Yeah, it'll, it'll be an interesting. Season. I just it'll be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, part of me wants like I think it's more fun. Purdue's good because they're a team that like I feel like Purdue is very much like they play who like they play up to whoever they're playing. Like I remember the years when Braxton Miller was there, they'd always be competitive with Ohio State, and then they lose to like Indiana State. Like I think it's just more fun. When Purdue can hang with teams, because like mm-hmm. they're one of those teams like you never think they, they might upset every single team. You never know. Like they hung with Michigan last year. Remember that? If Wilton Spade yeah. didn't get hurt, you never know. So I think I don't know. I, I look at Purdue as a team. It's like 
their goal, if, they, if they're out of bowl contention by, say, October 27th with, at, at Michigan State, maybe like an Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, try to ruin their season. And so I think that's something that Purdue could do. They seem to play really well at playing up to whoever they play against. All right, so let's move on to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. As last year, they went 4-8, and 3-6 and six in the conference and finished 5th in the West. And they lost their... They lost six of their last seven games. They returned 15 total starters, seven on offense and eight on defense. Their key losses include Tanner Lee, Chris Weber, and Nick Gates. And they also picked up a guy in the name of Scott Frost. How decent quickly? Pickup. Yeah, very decent. Um, how quickly can Scott Frost turn Nebraska around? I love Scott Frost. They have 15 starters back, like Dan said. And the thing they don't have is a returning quarterback. That could be the biggest flaw I see on this team. If Adrian Martinez can play well his first year, Scott Frost will be bowling this year and have a very successful mm-hmm. season and get him up on the right track, similar to what J- Jeff Brom did at Purdue like we just talked about. I still think it could be a few years away before Nebraska alum Scott Frost gets them back to like the glory days where they were winning championships and all that. Like I think that's years away. But I do think Cornhusker fans have reason to smile, have reason to be optimistic, because I do like what yeah. Scott Frost is building in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, I'm with you, Jason. I think he turns Nebraska around as quickly as he can find a quarterback. The defense returns a lot this year, uh, but, uh, I mean, wh- whoever he picks a quarterback, uh, he's just got to roll with them, and if they play well, I think this Nebraska team can definitely be a upset contender for some of these Big Ten teams that they have in their schedule. I just look at a guy like Stanley Morgan Jr. If he oh, can yeah. just have, like, this he's, is where, like, it sucks for, like, coaches. Like, if he could be, like, a sophomore, they could be so good in here. Like, yeah. yeah, he's a senior, but, like, I don't know. Like, you just look at, like, what they're going to have next year. I kind of started doing that. Like, it really does depend on Adrian Martinez if he can show flashes. Because if not, next year's going to be brutal without a guy like Stanley Yeah, Moore. I think you roll with Martinez to I did go with the future. Yeah. But um, very interesting stat. Uh, he had – Scott had probably the greatest turnaround of all time yeah. with UCF as he took them from 0-12 – to six and seven to thirteen and zero, I don't think he can do that with Nebraska. Obviously, but <laughs> they're four and eight. I mean, they go to eight and four. Yeah, and the competition and is a lot <laughs> tougher. Uh, but I do think he can get Nebraska to be a Big Ten West contender in the next five or so years. And yeah, so I, I love Scott Frost like Jason does, and um, so yeah, he'll eventually get Nebraska turned around. So what do you got for this year? Seven and five, fourth in the Big Ten West. Michigan, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Ohio State, and Iowa are their losses. Oh, say that again. Michigan, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Ohio State, Iowa. Those are the losses. They are seven and five. You think they beat Michigan State and Yeah, I said that in the Michigan State. Did you? Yep. I checked this for this one. Last yeah, year I did, did not check them. I was real bad. I just like yeah. put down records. Like, I, I love always, them. Yeah. But now I went back. I was like, all right, I actually need to check this. So yeah, yeah I hadn't been in Michigan State in the other one. Okay. I think it's a six and six season for Nebraska, also fourth in the conference. But hey, that's what Scott Frost did the year before they went twelve and zero. Yeah, I think they're definitely an upset candidate, um, though, for some of these teams. Unfortunately, they have more on the road this year with at Michigan, at Wisconsin, at Northwestern, at Ohio State. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, uh, I got them going five and seven, uh, two and seven in the conference, finishing sixth in the West. Losing to Michigan, Purdue, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Ohio State, Michigan State, and Iowa. Uh, the schedule, it's extremely tough, so I can see them getting to six or seven wins, but I think five is a lot more realistic. Uh, like Jason mentioned earlier about Stanley Morgan Jr., I think he will have a huge season, and he will make Martinez's job a lot easier. They need it. But also, before we go move on from Nebraska, we talk about how bad Tanner Lee is at quarterback. Like, I always remember, I'd try a Nebraska game. He'd throw one pass, like, all right, I can't do this. This dude's horrible. Like, how did he get drafted? Like, I was so mad. That dude was literally the worst quarterback of all time. At all least right. I wasn't like Zach, who said North Carolina. Like, he's went oh off my on North gosh. Carolina last year. Brandon Harris. Yes, he went off on him. I don't. If I'm you want to like, go back and listen to the ACC that's funny. podcast, it's really year. funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True fans know what we're talking about. If you've been following us since the beginning, you guys know what we're talking about. But. Yeah. Yeah, I just Tanner Lee was so bad, and so like when I saw he was a senior, when I knew saw he was gone, I'm like, thank God for the Cornhusker <laughs> fans. I don't have to watch this guy play because they went from Tommy Tommy Armstrong. Yeah. Remember him? He yeah. was there for 96 years. It felt like <laughs> that dude played forever, and then they had to deal with a guy like Tanner Lee. I was like, oh, that's terrible. That dude's horrible. All right, <laughs> so let's move on to Minnesota as 
Last year they went five and seven, two and seven in the conference, and finished sixth in the West. They started three and zero, but finished two and seven. They returned fourteen total starters, seven on offense and seven on defense. Their key losses include Connor Rhoda, Jonathan Celestin, and Duke McGee. So, talking about PJ Fleck, keeping on the coaches, um, is this the year for PJ Fleck? What do you mean by the year? Like to be a contender? Like to, to have his job being in question? Like oh, what do you no, mean? Oh no, job's definitely not being in question. But I'm talking about the year getting this team over the hump. Um. I don't think so because I think he still has time. This program's his for a while. This team is very hot. Seems to be a sleeper that a lot of teams like. I do like their squad. I see the Big Ten West kind of all beating each other out. Like I've said, I have them, Nebraska, and uh, Northwestern all at 7-5. and five. So I think they're bowling, but they're not in contention for the Big Ten West. Okay. I'm going to say no. I mean, Minnesota's just so young this year. And, I mean, I can't blame them. Like, P.J. Flex trying to build a program and – trying to be good in a couple of years, but, um, I mean, there's just so much youth throughout this depth chart. Uh, I think Minnesota, you have to watch out for them in a year or two, but Mm -hmm. right now I I would not say this is going to be a great year for Minnesota. Yeah, you look at a team, uh, you look at a guy like Tanner Morgan, and when he's like a junior, that's when this team could be real. Yeah. He's a redshirt freshman, you give him two years. But, Dan, i got to ask you this question. Be real with me. When they were three and zero last year, you thought this team was legit because they were out. They beat teams oh, by yeah. seventy five. It was like ninety nine to twenty four in their first three games combined. They were yeah. just killing teams. You were all in. Oh yeah, you? and then in the next few games they competed with Maryland, some really Purdue, good teams. Michigan State. They all were within one score. Yeah, but then they only beat Illinois by a touchdown. I mean, they didn't really get blown out till the end. They got blown right. out by so Michigan. So they kind of North just Western gave up towards yeah. the end. But yeah. like. They were they weren't a terrible team last year. Looking at a five and seventeen, they were a pretty good five and seventeen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, talking about PJ Fleck though, he went one and eleven in his first year at, Mes- at Western Michigan and ended up increasing his wins to eight the next year, kind of like Scott Frost with uh, UCF. I can see him improving, but not that much. The quarterback position, in my opinion, that will dictate whether this is a bowl team or not. And we really don't know much about that position. It looks like redshirt freshman. Tanner Morgan is leading the, the competition right now, but we will see. So, what do you guys got Minnesota doing record-wise? Yeah, I got them 7-5, and 5th, Ohio State, Nebraska, Purdue, Northwestern, and Wisconsin are the games they lose. It's basically all the games they should lose, and then Purdue, I think, gets the upset against Minnesota. I think it's a 5-7 and seven season for Minnesota. Um I just don't see – I mean, the out-of-conference is going to be pretty easy, but I think some of these Big Ten games are going to be very tough. I, I could see them five or six wins. Um, I have a six and six, three and six in the conference. Uh, I think they lose to Iowa, Ohio State, Nebraska, Purdue, Northwestern, and Wisconsin, but they beat – They lose to Iowa and Purdue? Yes. That means they must but have they upset. Beat you, yeah, say they beat have to Maryland. upset. Um, who else would they beat? Read through your teams again. Uh, Iowa, Ohio yeah. State, Nebraska, yep. Purdue, Northwestern, Wisconsin. That means they only beat IU and Illinois in the Big Ten. And then they'd beat no. New Mexico. And Maryland. You were saying Maryland. Maryland, yeah. Yeah. And then they'd beat Miami, Fresno State, and New Mexico State, yeah. obviously. So, so, yeah. Six and six. So, let's move on to... The best team in college football. The best team in college football. That's right. Illinois. Last year, they went 2-10, and 0-9 oh and in the conference, and finished last in the West. They finished on a 10-game losing streak after going 2-0. and They returned 16 total starters, 8 on offense and 8 on defense. Their key losses include Jeff George, Trey Watson, and Patrick Nelson. So what do you guys like about this team? Give me a record and standings prediction for them. There's nothing to like. They're <laughs> Illinois. They're 2-10. and They're going to be 7th, and they're going to lose to everybody but Kent State and Western Illinois. They're literally terrible. They might. They will probably lose to Rutgers. That was the game I had to go between, Rutgers yeah. and Illinois. Why was I thinking about that game? I don't know. But I gave the nod to Rutgers because I think they have a pretty decent team with Chris Neely, head coach. Yeah, I'm going to say 4-8. and eight. I mean, Lovey Smith played a lot of young guys last year, so a lot of them are going to come back, and um, I just see a 4-8 and eight season for Illinois. Eight. I I mean okay back to I answer your real question I think Mike Dudex the one guy that's like oh, I can't oh yeah no if, yeah if definitely healthy. I was about but, to mention him yeah but um so you think hold on what are your wins 
Um, Penn State, next nah. Wisconsin. I think Rutgers. Um, <laughs> Rutgers, okay. And then the three non-conference Do they get the games. three non-conference? They play UCF. I, USF. USF, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Neutral site. Potentially that. I mean, also, Maryland and Minnesota aren't, like, Guaranteed. Right. Illinois has Minnesota at home. That'd be a crazy upset if Illinois beat Minnesota. That would save Lovey Smith's job in my mind. No, you that would not save Bro, Lovey Smith. He is only no. What is he? No. <laughs> only five and nineteen. He's got no, it. No, he came in. Dude, they were so bad when he came in. Don't act like they got worse. He came in after they went on a with went five and seven. Went he went three and nine the next year, <laughs> two and ten last year. That's fine. They got it. No, Lovey Smith Bro, is going to have to go bowling this coach. year to keep his job, in my opinion. Um, I got him at three and nine, one and eight in the conference, finishing last in the West. You're a hater on L- on Lovey Smith beating. I have him beating Rutgers, um, but I think Lovey Smith he to keep his job he has to go bowling. I think. Do they do it? Is there no. any way Illinois is bowling? Best no. case scenario, nope. they go bowling. Nope. No, they do not. Do and they I think Penn State? this is the one team I am for sure on that their head coach is going to be fired. You're a Lovey Smith got screwed when he was in Chicago. Then he got screwed when he was in Tampa Bay. He got one year of Jameis. He made Jameis look good. Then he got the can. You're a hater. I'm all in. I'm, I feel bad for Lovey Smith. He got fired twice when he shouldn't have in the NFL. Let him keep his job. Whoever comes in Illinois is not going to do any better. They literally suck. They lose their best player. This he year. literally made him worse. Who cares? <laughs> you can't get any better. Like they're not going to get better. Who goes? I, I can't wait to go play some Illini football. I mean, they weren't terrible. But I mean, they, they are. Great. So look at their team when you look at who's going to be back next year. They lose Mike Dudek, who's the only guy that we can name off the top of our head. And then you look at Phil Steele's magazine, and the other I mean, they, they, they do have, have 13 so- Alex- sophomores currently in their projected starting lineup. Okay, but you look at their two notable guys. Nick Allegretti, who's a lineman, never heard of him in my life, but he's notable. <laughs> he's a senior. And Mike Dudek. I'm sorry, but both are bonds. Like, once they're gone, they're going to be terrible. Cameron Thomas sucks. I watched him play yeah. one game last year, and I was but, like, I mean, angry someone's I watched on it. Lovey Smith. No, actually, a lot of this is on Lovey Smith. What is. are we talking about? But you gotta believe in him. Actually, you don't. No, but like, don't. there's nothing better. I, I guess my thing is like, who's gonna come to Illinois? It's even better. Anybody? Like, you're not gonna convince me by like, you're not gonna convince me by like, oh yeah, come to Illinois. You're gonna turn this thing around. Like Scott Frost isn't walking through those doors. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no, like. But- Whoever, yeah. Like a good team, like like the sleeper team that's not a power five is not like their coach is not going to go. Oh, I'm going to the Illinois after this season. Like, <laughs> no, give me a break. Lane Kiffin, go to the big FAU. He has a heck of a season. No, not Lane Kiffin. We're not talking about. You know what we talk Kiffin. about with Lane Kiffin real fast? No, no, real fast. No, no one wants no, to hear listen, about Lane. They actually, want to hear about the Big Ten West. Hold on. The last Lane thing I have to say about Lane Kiffin. Watch this happen. If Tua wins the job, Jalen Hurts goes down to FAU. I mean, I can see it. That would be crazy. Jalen Hurts on the FAU. That's he made him so good. I'd have to watch FAU every single game. Jalen Hurts FAU. That'd be crazy. Last chance University. That's crazy. Anyway, let's move on from Illinois and move on to the Heisman contenders for this year. What do you guys got? So I'm gonna go with Jonathan Taylor. Um, he is really the only clear cut guy that has a Heisman contention. It has to be Jonathan Taylor, and if it's not Jonathan Taylor, the guy that I've heard some buzz around is Clayton Thorson. I don't think they're good enough to be able to do it, but I think he's the guy, like, if I had to pick a sleeper. But I think that Heisman, if it comes out of the Big Ten, is definitely coming out of the East. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that because Taylor just has such a good shot at winning the Heisman. I would put him in my top five right now. I think this is one of the years that you really don't know who's going to win the Heisman. This is one of the most wide-open years for the Heisman. Like, I don't think there's... Like, the favorite, I don't think, is guaranteed to win the favorite. Like, win it. I don't think... Like, Stanford, like last year, everyone Stanford and Wisconsin... Was win it. But, like, Stanford and Wisconsin aren't, like, guaranteed to, like, be great. Where it's like, hey, they might fall. Then you got Shea Patterson. Does he play well? Trey McSorley. Yeah. I don't know. Last year, it was Lamar Jackson, but, like, Baker Mayfield was not surprised. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um... I think Jonathan Taylor, he has a real shot at the trophy this year, and it won't be just because of him. If his offensive line will help him a lot with that, kind of like kind of like a Notre Dame last year with Josh Adams and how great that offensive line was. Um, Jason mentioned Clayton Thorson. I think that's an extremely dark horse, um, but he's going to have to get Northwestern to 10 or 11 wins and win the West. So what do you guys got for your surprise team this year? I got my Big Ten West champion, the Iowa Hawkeyes, as my Jeez. surprise team. Nathan Stanley is going to be one heck of a player. Maybe he should be my Heisman pick. But Can yeah. we just talk about that? 
I don't, Iowa winning. This is the thing. The I just I didn't really think it through when I had him being Wisconsin. Like, oh, I they'll could upset tell. him. I, I was like, oh, tell. they'll upset him, and then like their schedule, they're not gonna like lose that. Like they're going to be good. Like don't have a nine and three because their schedule's so bad. So I had him upsetting Wisconsin. I was like, oh, we're good, and then just did not think about the fact they'd actually win the Big Ten West if that happens. But you know, There's you no don't way. you don't look back, Dan. You just hope for the best. When you when life gives you lemons, you make Iowa Hawkeyes football, and that's what we're doing. What and. They are going to go ten and two, win the Big Ten West, and win the Big Ten West. The Big Ten West. <laughs> I'm not saying well, who do you have. You have Michigan, right? Yeah, I think so. And you have Michigan and Iowa have, in the Big Ten championship. What, what do you have Michigan doing? Ten and two. Yeah, ten and two. Ohio State. So 10 that and means two. no, no Big Ten team makes the. Uh, play. Nah, I think the Big Ten team is still a good team. With two losses. Yeah. So you, you're putting Michigan gets in. With you're putting play, Michigan you know, in. Yeah, Michigan gets in. Oh, you you have by, Michigan in your playoffs right now. This might change by the, by the time we get to the Chicago Cup. But right Holy now, I, th- I think Michigan gets in. Yeah, ten and two. Big time Notre statements Dan. right here from wow. Jason Gandhi. Well, Iowa it's wake, not. They beat the Big Ten Michigan West. with two Michigan losses. Gets in with Listen two to losses. me. Michigan gets in. They beat. <laughs> they will have beaten the best team in the Big Ten West. Maybe Wisconsin. Maybe Iowa. The best team in college they, football, Notre Dame. Go ahead. Best team in college football, Notre Dame. Sure, you said it, not me. <laughs> and they would have beaten Ohio State in my scenario. You beat all three of those teams. Those got. He's definitely getting. They lose to. I don't remember, Dan, in the Big Ten East. Dylan, fill time while I look. Michigan State and Penn State, is that how we I don't know. Answer to? your surprise team while I look. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Iowa may be record-wise because I also have them at 9-3, and three, but I, I don't think they'll Atta be boy. great. Jump but, on the Hawkeye bandwagon. I mean, you also got to look at Nebraska. I think Scott Frost can start to turn things around this season, maybe pull off an upset. I think Purdue and Nebraska is my surprise team for this year. I think their talent gets better, but the record doesn't because of the schedules. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, I'll kick it over to Dylan to finish this bad boy off. Yeah, so thank you guys for listening today. If you heard Jason in the intro, um, make sure you check out scoochcase.com um, for a 15% off discount on your order. And that contest that he mentioned, anyone who... Um, puts a comment in uh, this video or um, subscribes to our channel on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever you want to check it out on, gets automatically entered into a contest for a Scooch Wingman case. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Put yourself in the running for a Scooch Wingman. We both have, we all have one. All three of us have one in our case on our phone right now and. I think we all love them. So, Yeah, they're great. I yep. absolutely love them. I use them every day. I love what the company's about. They also do things great in the community, so I absolutely love Scooch. Definitely go check out their website, scoochcase.com. All right, and that's all we've got for today. Make sure you subscribe. Check out our college football playlist to see the rest of our predictions, and we will see you very soon.